Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn about Oracle Rack concepts and theory. This particular tutorial is will help you to prepare for your interview questions because we are going to cover the concept of how the Rack works and what are the terminology. And once you go through this particular slide, then you will be able to understand the Rack working knowledge of Rack. You will have a theoretical knowledge of Rack and all the components that makes up the rack and how rack functions which will allow you to you know answer your interview now this is not a q a where i am not going to ask a question and give you the answer basically the theory covered here will prepare you for your rack interview now let's and before you start watching this particular tutorial i would like to make one point very clear there is no practical session this is completely theory the i have created videos on how to set up rack i there will be another video which will talk about the rack commands and in that in that particular video you will see how the rack multiple rack commands and how you can uh, perform multiple rack functions however this is a complete theory now before we start understanding the rack i would like to explain what is the clustering concept basically clustering is a concept where a standalone server group together with additional software function as one unit basically it is nothing but multiple servers and those multiple servers you install some kind of software on it and then you create a cluster you can the clustering is not specific to oracle clustering is a term where you, you you can have clustering in windows you can have clustering in reddit linux you can have clustering in uh, solaris you can you can have multiple different types of clusters and the cluster concept of cluster means you actually combine multiple servers together to form a single unit a collective unit so oracle clusterware is a, a cluster software that provides high availability for oracle databases Oracle clusterware enables servers to communicate with each other. So the servers which are part of the cluster communicate with each other so that they appear as a collective unit. In this way, the separate server appear is if they are one system to application and end user. So it, it looks like from, from the end user, it looks like it is a one application. It is not. But however, behind the scene, there are multiple servers which forms the cluster. A cluster consists of one or more servers these servers are called as cluster member or node you can you be sometimes they are called as a cluster member or sometimes they are called, called as a cluster node oracle clusterware was first released with oracle database 10g r1 so this is something that you would like to know it was first released with 10g r1 what are the benefits of cluster the benefits of cluster are multiple such as you know high uh, availability of oracle databases and when you when i say high availability if one of the let's say you have multi you have three or four servers and one of the server goes down your oracle database will be still be up and running those three other servers will continue to work and the application will continue to run you have the ability to fail over so you can say that you know you want to fail over the application from one server to another you have scalability of applications because you can add multiple nodes to the cluster if tomorrow the load the application wants to scale higher then you can add multiple nodes to the cluster you can add nodes to the cluster since you have multiple nodes serving the same database you have increased throughput you can increase the throughput by if you if you still want to increase on demand you can add more servers to the cluster when you want to do the planned maintenance you, or software maintenance you can eliminate the downtime because you you have to you can patch one server at a time the other server can be still be up and you can eliminate unplanned downtime like one of the server crashes then your database will be still be up so you can eliminate unplanned downtime so these are the benefits of the cluster now what are the high availability options in your oracle database now oracle database high availability options when it comes to clustering can be seha which is standard edition high availability feature seha sometimes called as seha oracle restart oracle rack one node and oracle rack so these are the some of the options we'll go through all of these options one by one so what is oracle restart so oracle restart is a feature and i think i did not cover the seha yeah i did cover so oracle restart is the is the is the <coughs> feature where you you can have 
it, it is basically installed on a standalone server and it is only for the single instance and it allows to you know for if it will allow the ha so if something happens the database when you start the server automatically the if you have enabled the auto start then ha will come up and uh, and the database will come up so you know you don't have to manually if the server reboots on its own the oracle restart takes care of restarting your database restarting your listener you don't have to manually intervene and it is it needs a standalone server it it does not need a cluster it is basically on a single so it needs a oracle grid infrastructure or oracle cluster software for a standalone server seha is the is the facility which allows you to enable the high availability where at any point in time only database can run on particular node the another node they will be down so it is basically an active passive kind of um, solution in oracle rack and what exactly is it's not you sometimes you call it as a rack but it's not a rack because it is basically an active passive solution your database can be active if let's say you have two node rack uh, two node ci environment and uh, if your database is up on one node then the other node it is passive and for some reason you want to reboot the first node then you what you can do is you you can relocate the database from one node to another node so it will shut down on this node and it will be up on the second node that is the active passive solution and this particular uh, solution is enabled for the say a standard edition so you can implement this in the standard edition which uh, saves your licensing cost Th this particular feature needs oracle 19.7 so are you 19.7 or later and it needs a grid infrastructure so you have to install the grid as you are installing the rack and when you actually create the databases that time you have to decide that you are going for a standard uh, edition high availability the next option is oracle rack one node it is an active passive similar to rack however the advantage of this is like before uh, before failing over your database to another node you will first start the database on the second node and then you will relocate so it minimizes the downtime uh, and this particular so uh, option supports rolling upgrades such as pass set database and operating systems and it needs oracle grid infrastructure same as seha it needs the oracle grid, grid infrastructure enabled so this is a another this is another option for your high ability the last option that we are going to cover here is the rack the most important oracle rack and it is an active active solution it is an active active solution it enables multiple servers so basically you can have the you can the database is on the shared location the database is on the shared location and there are multiple instances or multiple database servers and all of those database servers connect to the same database so application will be connecting via some applications will be connecting via server 1 some application will be connecting via server 2 or a cluster member 1 cluster member 2 or cluster node 1 cluster node 2 you can call anything those these are multiple servers multiple instances same database they will be when they update the transaction the data transaction gets updated in the same database so behind the scene it's the same database it it needs the oracle grid infrastructure to be installed it it supports rolling upgrades patch set database and operating system and it is an active active solution so basically these are the four types of uh, options seha is an active passive oracle restart is for the standalone Oracle one node is for the also active passive however advantage is like you can start the database on the other node before you fail over and the rack is an active active solution now that we have understood the options for oracle database let's go ahead and understand the concept of flex cluster so basically the flex cluster is nothing but starting from oracle 12.2 all clusters are configured as oracle flex cluster basically flex cluster is nothing but a cluster which is configured with one or more hub nodes and can support large number of nodes oracle flex cluster consists of hub nodes and leaf nodes so this is an asm flex cluster comes into the asm so asm uh, in the asm world what you have is like you have a hub node so you have oracle flex cluster is consist of hub node and leaf node so it is consist of hub node and leaf node and hub nodes is actually the one which has got a direct access to shared storage and there should be at least one hub node and you can have maximum 64 hub nodes leaf nodes do not have direct access to the uh, to the uh, storage it actually leaf nodes actually uses the hub nodes to access the storage so leaf, leaf node access the data through hub nodes and you can have many leaf nodes you can have many leaf nodes hub nodes can be 64 but you can have many leaf nodes now 
what are the requirements for your clusterware? So you need to make sure that all the servers where you want to install the Oracle clusterware must use the same operating system. You can't have the mix and match. You can't have one, one uh, Windows server and one uh, uh, Linux server. You can't have that. You have to make sure that they have same operating system and at the same level. Uh, also, you need to make sure that the operating system is certified by the Oracle clusterware. So Oracle has certified that. Otherwise, you will you you might be able to install it, but Oracle will not support it. So that is very important. The another thing is a cluster node needs a second network, which is called interconnect. This is very important interconnect. Or in other words, cluster member needs at least two NICs. So one for the interconnect and one for the public IP. So one for the public communication uh, where the where your uh, uh, where your host will communicate and you can log into those hosts etc. So one will be the public IP and another one will be the private IP which is also part of the interconnect. So and the interconnect is 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 the private network and only cluster can access. You should not you should make sure that you cannot connect to the interconnect directly. You, if you try to ping to the interconnect, you should not be able to ping to the interconnect because the only the cluster should be able to connect to the to the uh, the interconnect IP or the private network. And also uh, one of the things like you should install the Oracle cluster binaries on a local disk directly attached to the server. So you. You can you by default when you install the operating system there will be a disk which where you will install uh, the operating system. You can use the same disk or you can have another disk, but that disk should be local to the server. You should you should not use the uh, separate. You should not use the shared disk because if you use the shared disk and if the if anything happens to the binaries any any issue happens to the binaries the entire cluster will go down. So to prevent or support the HA availability you should make sure that the binaries are installed on a disk local disk which is internally attached to the server. Now what are the storage considerations for Oracle Rack? So Oracle ASM is supported storage that are that is a, another uh, another options. Uh, shared storage etc etc i will not go into those details but one of the supported storage is oracle asm you can use the same disk group for database files ocr and voting files or you can use this uh, separate different disk group so uh, ocr voting disk database files and i'll cover what is OCR, ocr and voting disk i'll cover them but you can store the ocr voting files and database files in the same disk group or you can use the different disk group oracle recommends that you create at least two separate Oracle disk group, one for the data file and one for the recovery. So recovery file is nothing but FRA, fast recovery area. So it Oracle says that you should at least have one for the data file and one for the recovery file. Now, if you create only one disk group for the storage, then OCR and voting files and data files and recovery files are contained in one disk group. It is possible that you, you can have only one disk group and you can have, you can store absolutely everything. You can store OCR, voting files, data files, the FRA recovery files etc in the same disk group if you create multiple disk group for storage then you can separate this you can have a separate file for OCR separate for voting file separate for data file separate for recovery file you can have something like that no basically what I would suggest is like keep OCR and voting file as one the data file should be in a different disk and the FRA should be in the different so at least have three ASM disk group, one for OCR and voting file, one for your database files and one for your recovery files. That would be my recommendation. Now, this is an important note. Oracle clusterware is installed independently of Oracle database. So you, after you install Oracle clusterware, you can install Oracle database. So you have to install the clusterware software first and then you have to install the database software. You, you cannot install the database software without installing the clusterware. And the database software is installed separately. So first you finish the clusterware installation and then only you go for the database home installation or the database software installation. Now, what are the Oracle clusterware files? So Oracle clusterware files are, are basically you can have OCR, OLR and voting files. So you can have OCR, which is Oracle cluster registry, OLR, which is Oracle local registry and voting file is nothing but about the node membership. So the Oracle cluster registry is the configuration. So basically it, it stores the clusterware and database configuration information. So it stores everything and I'll cover more into detail. OLR is local on every node and voting file is basically uh, about node membership and it should be accessible by all nodes in the cluster. So let's take a look at all of this in detail. So what is OCR? OCR is the is the file which contains information about all Oracle resources in the cluster. 
it is used to manage store and manage information about components such as what are the rack databases what are the listeners what are the virtual ips what are the services etc you can use ocr config ocr dump ocr check to manage ocr olr so you can use this utility to manage this ocr and olr oracle recommends that you define multiple ocr locations you can have up to 5 ocr locations each ocr location must reside on a shared storage that is accessible by all nodes so make make sure that every location that you are keeping the ocr that should be accessible by all nodes in the cluster you can replace a failed ocr location online if it is not the only ocr so let's say you have configured two ocrs locations if one of the ocr fails then you can restore it you can replace it without bringing down the cluster you can do it online however however if it is only single ocr you cannot do it so only if it is a, a, a redundant if there are more than one ocr location you can replace it if there is only single ocr location you cannot replace it online you have to start the cluster in exclusive mode you can store ocr and voting files on a oracle asm disk groups so uh, the ocr and voting files can be on the oracle asm disk groups and if you are and the backup of ocr and voting files so that will be an automated backup that oracle automatically takes of ocr and voting files you can also take a manual backup but the or oracle suggests that the backup of ocr and voting files should be on a different sorry there there is no backup of voting files there is only backup of ocr the backup of ocr should be on a different disk group from the location the disk group where you are storing the ocr file so these are the oracle recommendations so this is about oracle cluster registry so oracle cluster registry is a shared location and it should be accessible by all the nodes now the, that is there is something called olr which is a local registry local registry is located on each node in a cluster and contains information only specific to that particular node so it does not contain the information about other node it only contains the information about that node that's why it is called a local because it is local to that particular node it contains manageably information about cluster where and dependencies between various services HA services Oracle HA services uses this information when it tries to start up the cluster or it manages tries to manage the cluster. So basically, this is very important. If you if you have lost the OLR, then your cluster will not come up online. So you need to make sure you have the OLR. OLR is located on local storage on each node, so it is on each node. And OLR default location is grid based CRS data host name OLR. So this is the default location of your OLR. and you have to replace this host name with the actual host name so this is the or grid base so uh, the location where or a grid home crs data host name olr so this is the location of your olr voting file so voting file is the file which contains the information about node membership so it is a information about node membership it it decides it uses oracle cluster where uses voting files to determine which nodes are members of the cluster you can configure voting files on oracle asm or you can configure voting files on shared storage storage must be shared or in other words each voting file must be accessible so you can, you should have make sure that each voting file is accessible by all nodes in the cluster very important if any node that does not have access to abs absolute majority of voting files more than half then it is automatically restarted so it will automatically restart on its own you can dynamically add or replace voting files without stopping the cluster so this is very important you can dynamically add or replace voting files without stopping the cluster now voting file recommendations oracle recommends that you have minimum of 3 voting files on a physically separate storage you can have up to 15 voting files but oracle recommends not to use more than 5 5 are 3 are recommended and uh, sorry 3 are minimum 5 are recommended 15 supported but you don't have to use all 15 although 15 are supported you don't have to you can maximum that you can go is 5 that is maximum you can go up to 15 but 5 is more than enough for all the practical scenarios now we will understand the before we understand the ip configuration i just wanted to show you the diagram so the applications will connect to the something called scan so and you can have you can have one or more scan ips so maximum is 3 and you can you can also have just a single scan it is not it is not that you have to have a three scan ips you can have a cluster with only one scan ip that's also fine minimum you need to have uh, maximum you need to have three minimum you need to have one the scan ip should be in the same uh, subnet as your public ip 
and virtual IP. So the public IP, virtual IP and the scan IP should be in the same subnet and this should be the subnet where your applications are hosting. So this should be the same subnet. The private IP is the only IP which should be in a different subnet which is called which is for the cluster interconnect. So this is used for the cluster in interconnect. All of those, all of these nodes should be able to access the shy storage. So they should be able to access the shy storage and the applications actually the applications can connect to the database using virtual IP, using public IP or using scan IP because they are only in the public subnet. However, if they use the public IP and if this server goes down, then the that applications will not be able to connect unless you have something called you have set up the application to fail over. So to to avoid to configuring the failover at the application level, you can use the scan IP which manages the failover. So if for some reason this particular node goes down, the scan IP will not redirect. Scan IP will know that this node is down and it will not redirect any connection to this node. It will directly connect redirect to this node. So that is the advantage of scan IP because you will you will be able to you don't have to modify your connection or your uh, ent uh, application uh, connection to multiple IPs and even if you add the more the more nodes you, you can add like you can add more nodes you don't have to change the scan IP or change any configuration at the application. So application level changes are eliminated by using the scan IP. Now so this is what I was talking about. So this is the this I'm giving you an example of a three node cluster. So there are three nodes in the cluster one, two, three. And you can see that all of the all of the uh, IPs, the public IP, private virtual IP and the scan IP, they are all in the same subnet 192.168.1. So this is the subnet of all of these IPs. Only the private IP, only the private IP is in the different subnet. Only the private IP is in the different subnet you can clearly see from here okay so the private ip is the only sub only ip which should be in a different subnet all others should be in the public subnet and this should be the same subnet where your application servers reside so the application should be able to communicate to your database using the public subnet so the scan ip public ip virtual ip in the same subnet now what is the virtual ip address so virtual ip address is a basically registered it's a it's a as you can say it's a virtual IP if the if the cluster is down the VIPs are down you will not be able to get any response from your virtual IP end of the story you will if you try to ping to virtual IP you will not be able to ping to virtual IP if the cluster is down it is basically it is in the form of the the virtual IP you have to create a host name dot VIP and to this you will map the virtual IP so you will create and the virtual IP should be in the public subnet and it is and basically the it allows the application to send the client request to the no to the other node if the node is down okay. and so the and and that is the reason why it should be in the in the public public subnet so because it allows the client request the send to the node if the node is down so that is the reason why it should be in the subnet because the client will it will the client will will uh, the VIP will allow the client reroute the connection to other node if the if the uh, one of the node is down and the format of this is hostname dot VIP. The public IP address is again conf configured in the uh, DSCP or DNS or you can also configure it in a host file. The public IP address is used by the public interface. So here there will be a public interface and a private interface. So there will be two NICs. So public IP, you will configure the public IP to this NIC stands for network interface card. So the NIC you will configure two NICs. So you at minimum you need two NICs. Minimum you need two NICs. One for the public IP, one for the private IP. Now you can have multiple private IP. So you can have multiple NICs, etc. We will cover that at a later point in time. So you you the public IP is where you set at the, for, at a public network level and this is the in the should be in the public uh, interface so it should be in the public subnet and uh, public basically public IP is the one using which you will be able to connect to the actual host so if you want to connect to the actual host you should be able to use the public IP or the public host name the private IP is is for the internode communication it is also for the interconnect and uh, it it is basically you will configure this on a second nick you will configure this on a second nick and and any interface that you identify must be on a subnet that connects to every node so you need to make sure that 
which whichever whichever interface you define as a private that particular nick subnet should be that should be a nick on every node and that should have that same subnet you cannot have mix and match of subnets and the private interconnect is used for the cache fusion and other traffic uh, nodes and that is why it should be on a separate network that is why it should be on a separate network and remember that private ip address should be only reachable by the cluster nodes you can you should not be able to ping to the private ip you should not be able to ping to the private ip that is very important now note regarding private ip this is what i was talking about you can have multiple private ip so you can here we are talking about here we are talking about only two interfaces one interface for the public ip one interface for the private ip you can have multiple interfaces for the private ip you, so you can have so you can increase the ha between the multiple uh, interconnects so you can have that now but what what you cannot do is like you cannot put the pr private ip in the same subnet as your public subnet so you cannot do that you cannot change your private uh, sub ip to the subnet which you have configured as a public subnet oracle will not allow you to do that what is scan so scan basically is a uh, also another virtual ip and you can you can have you, at least one address it should have at least one address oracle recommends that you configure three for ha you don't need more than three even if you have 100 nodes in the cluster you don't need more than three maximum three is more than enough it has been tested by oracle that three will suffice and basically it allows the it al allows it removes the need to perform manual self so whenever you are you are um, uh, your client tries to connect you, because you are using the scan name which is same and even if you add node remove nodes the scan name will still be able to point to the correct nodes whichever are remaining whenever the, at the application level you only need to connect using the scan name you don't have to use the you don't have to use the vip you don't have to use the public ip you can use the public ip you can use the vip however scan is recommended because scan will be able to do your load balancing and scan will allow allow the, the scan will allow uh, to you know eliminate the changes at the client level so application it is recommended to use scan in the rack environment minimum one address maximum three more than enough you don't even if there are 100 nodes in the cluster you don't need 100 so here i was talking about here if for re for some reason you added a fourth cluster fourth node so db1 db2 db3 and now fourth node has come db4 node 4 you don't have to have four scan ips you can you still can keep three minimum is one maximum is three that is more than enough now the the remember that there are some parameters on the cluster that needs to be same instance number uh, sorry they needs to be different so instance number the inst uh, has to be different so you cannot have a same instance number or same uh, uh, if you are using the automatic uh, undo management then you you should have the different undo table space so there are some parameters in the rack that needs to have different values per node so you cannot have instance number is one the undo table space is another you cannot have same values across the across the rack cluster however there are some parameters which needs to have identical settings such as compatible cluster database control files block size domain files db name file dash recovery file dash recovery file dash unique name instance type execution remote login password undo management these are all the parameters that needs to have the same settings across all of your cluster so if somebody asks you what are the parameters that should be have identical identical values across all the cluster you can find out that these are the parameters that would need to have the same values across the cluster these are some of the parameters that needs to have unique values across the cluster the now you the installation guides so basically what i want to say here is like you can have you can have multi you can have different releases of cluster where different release of oracle asm and different release of oracle database on the cluster however you should be you should be aware of compatibility consistency you can ha only have one installation of oracle cluster where running in a cluster and it must be installed in its own so grid grid cluster 
cluster where installation is in the grid home so we call it as a grid home and that is nothing where nothing but the location where your cluster where and you can have only one installation now release of oracle cluster where that you must be using should be higher than asm and the database so you cannot have so oracle cluster where 19c supports nine oracle 19c database or asm 19c and oracle 19c and the databases it can support the 19c database and 12.1 so if you have 19c cluster where you, you can have one grid home which supports the 19c asm and it can support multiple database so you, if you but you cannot have oracle 12c cluster where supporting uh, oracle 19c databases so you if you want if you want to have oracle 19c databases then you need to upgrade if and if you are running oracle 12c cluster you need to upgrade your cluster you cannot you higher level cluster can support lower level databases not the other way around so this is some thing that you need to be aware now the upgrading and patching of oracle clusterware so this is uh, so oracle clusterware supports in place patching and uh, it supports out of uh, out of play uh, uh, out of place upgrades etc sorry so in place means you are doing you are actually up upgrading the same software in the uh, on on the same location so basically if the grid home is installed and in the in a particular directory and you are replacing that with the in the same binary location then that is something called in place out of place means you are actually going to install another home and then you are going to update so that is an out of place oracle also allows you uh, oracle also and remember that clusterware supports out of uh, clusterware supports in place and out of place however the database only supports out of place you cannot uh, upgrade the oracle home the rolling upgrade there is another thing called rolling upgrade where you actually actually can what you can do you can upgrade one node at a time so you don't have to upgrade all the nodes and you can upgrade one node at a time so the other node can be still be up and the applications can still connect to the other node and once uh, the you have com completed the first one node then you can start the you can fail over the databases start the node and you can do the upgrade on the so that is something called rolling upgrade so you can do the rolling upgrade and oracle also supports the force upgrade in case where some nodes of the cluster are down so that is a uh, something that to be known now the Oracle clusterware components. So the Oracle clusterware is divided into two separate technology stacks. One is called CRS stack and one is called HA stack. So the the upper stack is CRS stack, the lower stack is HA stack. And there are multiple processes which actually facilitate the CRS stack and HA stack. So there are multiple processes for the and we will look into that. So the CRS stack is made of cluster ready services which are responsible for managing the high availability in the cluster css which is cluster synchronization services by controlling which nodes are members of the cluster asm to provide the disk management ctss cluster time synchronization services for the time management event management for event publishing grid naming services for uh, handling the requests sent by external dns servers and performing the name resolution so grid naming service oracle agent the support oracle specific requirements and complex so this is the one of the main pro process ons uh, for publishing and subscribing to fan events that the, basically this is there is no dot here for fan events and aura root agent a specialized aura agent for to manage the crds the resources to manage the resources such as network grid whip etc etc now remember one thing the aura agent and aura root agent will be there in crs stack and it will be also there in the uh, in the ha stack so here you can see aura agent and aura root agent so you can see this aura root agent and aura this aura agent and aura root agent is different from this this is this aura root agent and aura uh, aura agent and aura root agent is different this aura agent and aura root agent is different this is part of the hs stack this is part of the grid stack uh, the crs stack so what are the processes in hs stack so lo logger id so to log the information from all nodes the inter process communication which allows to uh, do the interconnect uh, usage grid pl plug and play so co coordinates you can or uh, the it accesses the plug and play profile and coordinates updates to the profile multicast domain name services so which used by grid plug and play to locate profiles etc and to perform the name resolution 
the or oracle agent so this is for to manage the daemons such as clusterware owner gip gipc gpnpd etc the this is for the uh, managing the crsd uh, help crsd to manage the csm processes and system monitor services for monitoring and operating metric collection etc there are other processes that i have not covered there are other processes that i have not covered i have just covered the main important processes so basically i have covered all the topics so what kind of you know i what kind of interview question so if you ask what are the benefits of cluster you can explain that what are the different types of uh, high ha availability options in oracle database in the clusterware environment this is not there are data guard that is golden gate etc but what are the options in the clusterware so you have standard edition high availability you have oracle restart you have one node you have rack uh what is oracle restart covered that what is seha covered that what is one node covered that what is oracle rack covered that what is a flex cluster covered that what is how what, what is the leaf node what is hub node covered that what are the system requirements for clusterware covered that what are the storage considerations for oracle rack covered that what is wh how when you have to install the database when you have to install the clusterware covered that what are the what are the oracle clusterware files ocr olr modding files covered that what is ocr in detail what is olr in detail what is voting file in detail what is the recommendation for voting file how the what are the interfaces for your cluster what what is the what how where where the public ip where the virtual ip when the, where the sub uh, sub scan ip which subnet they should belong where the private ip which subnet they should belong what is the concept of virtual ip what is the public ip what is the private ip what is the uh, the uh, the uh, how many interconnects you can have what is a scan concept what are the parameters that have unique settings what are the parameters that should have uh, that should have same settings across all the instances what are the installation guidelines you can have higher level clusterware how the patching is done what are the clusterware components the crs and ha services and what are the different processes so we have covered all of this in this particular tutorial i hope this particular tutorial was useful i hope after watching this particular video you will be able to answer the oracle rack questions there is another video that will come and that will talk about oracle commands so we will go through a lot of oracle commands which will help you to manage your cluster i hope this particular tutorial was useful i hope you learned something new today thank you for watching see you in next tutorial till then bye bye and have a nice day thank you bye